Yeah, get our boots on and haul buggy. Breaking all my own rules at the beginning of the show. I'm Ron Pepper, welcoming you to the Photo Focus Roundtable podcast for November 2023. Oh my God, 2023 is almost over. Hey, this month we are back. My co-host Rob Moroto and I. How you doing up there, Rob? In the in the Great White North. Oh God, yeah, it's it's really starting to get white up here. And my gosh, I don't know. Okay, you know I'm in Canada. Do you have daylight savings down there? Just changed. Ah. And I do. I can't believe it. I think it's silly every year, but I still feel the effects. And I, I I'm right. so ambivalent about that. How I like it or not. It's sunset at 4.30. It's yeah. awful up here. Yeah. The more north you go, the worse it is. Yeah, I used to walk home from high school. I'd go to school, go to swim practice, which is shorter than most sports, and I'd be walking home in the dark. That was like Seattle area, not even as far north as you. And then you walk, and then you go back to school in the, in the dark. Uh, yeah. So um, welcome to the new, um, what is it now? Then it's, we're off daylight savings. Is that Yeah, right? it, it, yeah. It, it's, it's like the vampire's paradise right now. <laughs> Anyways, let's yes. get into this. We got to thank a sponsor, don't we? We do. Do we have a sponsor? We're, we're good at that, aren't we? Photo, fo- uh, photo Focus. Oh my gosh. I just said we're good at it, and then I said Photo Focus. We're on Photo Focus. <laughs> and the sponsor is Photomatics for high dynamic range photography that we both use. And we, we might even bring up uh, I got a little minor thing to talk about dynamic range later, I think. But if you are shooting landscapes and you have. Uh, You want to not have silhouette landscape with the bright sky, or if you're shooting interiors and the windows burned out and the room is too dark, high dynamic range is the solution. It's a great way to avoid carrying gear around to light the room or to light the space versus the natural light. And uh, Photomatics makes it easy to do that with all kinds of batch options. And if you're doing real estate photography, it is an absolute must. So try it out. Uh, the nice thing about it is that you can actually try out Photomax without paying a cent. You just download it, play with it, and when you fall in love with it, then you can give them some money. And if you want to know how to use it even better, well, hey, guess what? I got a course out there that can teach you how to do real estate photography using Photomax, but I'll talk about that later. And I'll also <laughs> you give you a coupon code later. You can even get a taste of Rob's uh, stuff on YouTube. That's all free. And he's got some great, uh, not only HDR and stuff, quite a lot about photography. I love the batch sky replacement, Rob. That's just, that was nails. I'm lucky being down here in Northern California, you don't have to replace too many skies, but it does happen. Yeah, and it saves me a good bit of time. Hey, uh, so this month we have two first-time guests. We're going to meet them in a minute. Uh, Jeff Cruz from Canada and Julie Vincent from Canada. Uh, everybody's from Canada but me. We're going to talk to them in just a few minutes, or just a minute. We'll be touching on um, a few things. We've got some rumors and announcements with Canon and Sony. We'll uh, Like we like to do, we like to touch on, hey, what are we, what are we photographers doing in video? I want to touch on uh, Eclipse really quickly because we said we would. We want to encourage listeners to consider getting uh, some epic shots of the Eclipse this time. Don't miss out. Yes, and keep on thinking about it. Keep it in the top of your mind and start, if anything, get those hotel reservations. If you haven't heard about uh, some tips and tricks, uh, check out our previous episode where we Mm -hmm. talked with some experts about the Eclipse. In fact, there were experts on. We even referred to other channels and shows that talk about the eclipse. There was quite a bit about it already. And I think uh, I think a great conversation is going to be about finding inspiration. And I think with the four of us, uh, three and a half Canadians, I think it'll be a good conversation. So let's um, do that then. Uh, yes. Let's, uh, ladies first, Julie Vincent from Cal- uh, Calgary-based photographer for real estate, extreme sports and events and actual and an actual exhibitor <laughs> welcome to the show julie how are you doing thank you thank you thanks for having me <laughs> She's like finally we get to join in the show here <laughs> tell, tell now you are rob's in the west on the west coast i'm on the west coast you are in uh 
This is the middle. Calgary. Calgary. We're, Calgary. Some some people in the states know us from the the Olympics. We're here in 1988. So mm -hmm. sometimes people will remember us for that. And the obvious where we are is Calgary Stampede. A lot of people know about that. But we're um, about 11 hours west by car from where Rob is. Yep. Sorry, not and, west, east. <laughs> and around six hours north of Montana. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, we're, we're actually, what did we do? I think it's eight hours straight to Coeur d'Alene from here. It's a bit of a hike, but anyways, it's a nice drive. <laughs> we did that. We did that drive when I was a kid because Mount St. Helens erupted in 1980. Yeah. And we had the pleasure of going to North Dakota, but we took the Canadian route all the way around because of the yeah. ash. <laughs> oh, right. Anybody, yeah. That's how, that's how old I am. Also joining from also Calgary, right? Jeff Cruz. That's right. Calgary yeah, we're representing Calgary today. Yeah. And uh, so, Jeff, you wrote down lens-based artists. I want to know what you mean by that. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm glad you asked. Um, the reason why Sweet. I said I say lens-based artist rather than photographer, I mean, by no means, is, it's not any uh, slight to the word photographer or photography in general. I do, I do uh, consider myself a photographer as well. It, it, it's more like I can't really put my... Uh, my work into any sort of genre or subgenre because I do so many things. Uh, so yeah, that's just a, a blanket kind of like way for me to to say I I, I create art with my with my camera and like my lens. So yeah. So then my my next question that I hope you'll also like is uh can I use can I steal that? Can I use it? For sure. <laughs> <laughs> I I didn't make it up. I also stole it with pride. Okay. So feel good. Free then I will feel that. Well, I think we need new terminology in the world. You know, I, um, I, I still, uh, not still, more and more, I'll be talking about, I was over there uh, shooting a hotel or a, shooting is one of the words that people are like, ooh, you really can't say that anymore. But I, I, I push back on that. I'm like, no, I'm going to keep saying it. It doesn't have to mean what people are starting to think it means. Like, in fact, maybe we can remove some of the, negativity by using words in more casual ways instead of you know going the opposite direction but that's a little different than what you're doing with <laughs> photographer but mm -hmm. i do think we need new terminology a lot of times and so mm -hmm. I like that yeah because let's face it anyone with an iphone now is a photographer right so rather than be classified yeah. that way i'd rather say well no like i i like I, I used to use the word um i'm a commercial visual artist mm -hmm. and it's a mouth, big mouthful though right Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it just got a little bit too much. Yeah. And then people are like, what, you're a photographer? It's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Exactly. And I, you know, you bring up a good point there, Rob, with terminology, if we sort of default to, you know, what's common in the marketplace, we don't come off as so pretentious where when we do default to, well, I'm, you know, not you, Jeff, I know you and I don't want you to understand I'm slagging off, but you know, like some people can get into these very like highbrow, you know, terminology for whatever it is they do. And yeah. In fact, I, I shoot photos, like mm -hmm. that's what I do. Although mm -hmm. I will say some of the environments that we shoot in, th you, you will know that I shoot uh, indigenous sports and those guys are so funny. So I'm saying guys, cause it's a lot of guys, but anyways, those guys are really funny. And when I say, well, I'm here to shoot, you know, whatever, they're like, well, you didn't bring, you know, you didn't bring your gun. Anyway. <laughs> Canadian humor. Oh man. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, in, humor way, in indigenous sports is real different than I'll tell you that it's really different. I've learned a lot of things about being funny. <laughs> Does anybody use the term hoser? Yes. Sweet. Mm -hmm. I didn't, I was wondering if it was still there because there's, a, there is a podcast. I believe it's a photography podcast called two hosers. If it's mm. still around, I know I heard them some time ago and I was wondering if that was still a thing. So another thing I grew up with. Bob and Doug I think McKenzie. it's an age related thing. I, I'm I'm gonna say, you know, in my age group that Bob and Doug are very, very, you know, present and that kind of stuff. But I would say that my kids kids ages would be like, what? Okay. Uh, yeah. I'll have to ask around, we'll get all the different Jeff. I guess I'm on the cusp. Like I I've heard of the term. I don't fully uh, understand. I, I, I probably can't define it for someone, but it's it's probably like it's more of a joke kind of term, I think. But pull up pull uh, up the old yes. movie called Strange Brew, and it'll yeah. be a. You might want to have a mind altering substance of choice when you watch it, but oh, okay. you know it's um it's 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 worth it. I think. I think I would say it's okay. kind of Canadian lore. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Um, Sounds good. Enough on the Canadians. Hey, let's um. 
this is either going to be quick or, quick or long. We've got a couple of gear items. Rob, I think you mentioned gear. that Canon has a haptic feedback coming. Yeah, I read you... about that. And I thought, here we are, all these years, we've been talking about making it so that, uh, you know, you add in your lens image stabilization, then you have your sensors image stabilization. You're trying to make it so things don't shake. And now you're act adding haptic, which is actually just shaking into a and camera. Is that, and is that what, like kind of and what is it what is it going to be for? I didn't look up what you mentioned. Is it going to be for like the shutter button or? Yeah. For, so for example, if you're using a. Maybe you mentioned what uh, haptic feedback is in case um, anybody doesn't know that's listening. Oh, yeah. If you don't know what haptic feedback is, uh, Apple, I think it was Apple that put, uh, put this out first where, you know, their buttons aren't actually buttons. Uh, but when you press it enough, then it does something. But to give the feedback back to the person who's doing the thumbing, the device actually shakes right where you're thumbing and they call that haptic feedback. Yeah, so the, the thumb button on the iPhone was the first one I think I used where it felt like you're pushing a button, but you weren't. <laughs> yeah, it just buzzes. There's a little yeah. buzzer underneath it. So the, the whole point of it is that if you have a mirrorless camera because it doesn't have a shutter and sometimes you're shooting things that are very quiet and you want to be able to know when you've shot something because oh. let's face it some of these new uh mirrorless they don't have a blackout at all and so you don't know if you've actually shot everything if you don't have your uh you know immediate sound, preview come up or anything like that so yeah. they've introduced uh a room well it's i guess it's still a rumor but of a haptic feedback button for your camera jeff and julie would you use that no. Do you, do you trust me? No. <laughs> so, uh, and I, this is an interesting question for me. So I have a really good friend who's a, a former journalist from Tehran. He and his wife are both from Tehran and they, we, they're all photographers, we're all photographers and we, in the backyard this summer and talking about, you know, these mirrorless cameras and he and I are kind of looking at each other, sizing each other up, you know, and I'm like, I'm not going there. And he's like, me there, I'm never going to, so I'm, I guess we can describe the DSLR that I use as sort of in the analog range now. I'm not presently for sure going towards uh, mirrorless because I don't find the technology is there yet. And particularly that viewfinder, I'm, yeah. I'm older than you guys. And I find that viewfinder is very like 19, early 1970s video. I find it so distracting, so I'm not there yet. I'm I'm all into my DSLRs. I love them, and yeah, yeah. yeah. About you, well, I, I think I think it's a tool that would be interesting to use in different scenarios, but I don't see myself using that in my everyday like workflow or, or you know things that I shoot. Uh, you know, if anything, I, I use a tripod uh, a lot of times. So. I uh, don't really need that, but I, I could see the uses for some people. Like, let's say they were setting up a photo booth or something like that, and they needed people to be pressing the button, or it's some sort of interactive art uh, display, art exhibit, or something like that, where people needed to press a button and needed some sort of feedback. Um, you know, because the haptic feedback thing, you know, harps uh, from like the days of like video games, right? So uh, I would say that it's new technology that might be used later on uh, if someone finds a good use for it. But uh, other than, you know, knowing that a picture has been taken, but uh, personally, I don't think I would use it at this point. Yeah. It might be interesting for something like street photography, but you know, when you don't want it, people mm. to know that you're taking pictures and just like, hey, yeah. hey, hey, click, 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 click. All right. That is a good point. Yeah. Because usually you're shooting at the hip or you're not even looking through the refinery because then you lose the moment. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. That's so that's a good point actually. Yeah. Well, if they're if they're partly solving cuz I agree with Julie I've well, I, I went polycamerous is what I called it early yeah. on when um mirror, uh, mirrorless came out. I got one of the original Olympus and I still have it. I use it for some things, but I'm a Nikon D850 is my I still I don't want to give up the DSLR. And one of the reasons is I would take the mirrorless like to my kids sports and stuff and i would miss all kinds of shots because the it was thinking and it was blacked out while i was i didn't know if i was shooting and so anyway uh, if they're getting better with that i'm happy about that where you can <clears throat> you know when you're shooting a dslr your viewfinder doesn't black out you're just it's mechanical right so you're you're, you're just looking through there so um if they're solving that i'm glad 
And it sounds like the haptic feedback compared to the actual, like Rob, what you said about, uh, you know, introducing vibration, but like with the DSLR, you got the vibration of the mirror and everything flipping. So Fair enough. Yeah, I don't know. I maybe I, it's, I like the innovation. I don't know if I'll use it either, but it's one of those that's it's good to see. Um, speaking of that too, this one sounds even more interesting. In my is the Sony, and I don't have Sony, but they have what they're calling a the new camera coming A nine. Do they call it Mark three or just three? Is an announced that has a global shutter, and of course I went, ooh, what does that mean? Simpler than I thought. Just instead of having the curtain motion. It just is doing what we, I'm surprised it's taken till now for mirrorless cameras to do, where it just captures the whole sensor one time. I don't know why that wasn't happening before, but I just use them. I don't huh. design them. So, so you won't have like a, like a flash sync won't be an issue anymore, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So it's like oh, it's yeah. getting rid of like rolling shutter. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the curtain, right? You had to time it for uh, like a certain shutter speed for anybody that's new to that. In fact, High speed shutter sync is a confusing thing until you do it a little bit and kind of go, oh, that's what's going on. You know, that the shutter curtain has to mm -hmm. go across the used to be film now sensor and it takes a fraction, fra tiny fraction of a second, but it can take longer than your the shutter time. So, yeah, because flash I've got won't cover the whole thing. You'll get partly bright and partly dark frame. But if it uh. just opens the whole thing at the same time, then. It eliminates so many issues. Huh. No, neat. Yeah, because I have that issue with my uh, old Fuji X-T1 or 2, where if you're shooting a scene that's moving really quickly and it's just on electronic shutter and you zip it by, it almost looks like the subject matter is slanted because mm -hmm. it's recording from the top to bottom. Mm -hmm. Right. And so the lines at the top are recording at one time, and then as you get down to the bottom, it, things have shifted. And so you get the subject that's slowly moved. It looks like one of those, uh, um, oh. Mirror. The, yeah, like the, mirrors. Yeah, exactly. And so it's, yeah, neat. I don't know why they didn't ever did that, but. Huh. Yeah, I've been wondering that since mirrorless came out, that why doesn't it just turn on the sensor and off the sensor? And that's the capture. I don't, I don't know what was holding that back, but I guess they're doing that now. And one another big advantage apparently is in a, a crazy frames per second. I think it said I lost my page now, but I think it said 120 frames a second. Wow. So whoa, yeah, uh, that that is that for 4K. Is that for photos or is that that's, that's like video? Is it? I think it's for photos. I'm finding the video here as I'm looking through the the page, but um, I'm pretty sure it said for photos. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. It yeah. The in, Alpha Mark Nine for the impressive global new global. shutter. It can shoot at 120 frames First. with no blackout and a maximum speed of one eighty thousandth of a second. One eighty thousandth of a second. <laughs> wow. So do wow. we, are we going to need anything for the eclipse now? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> that might be fast enough. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Woo. It, it's, it's interesting to, uh, to hear about all this technology, well, uh, like all this technology and innovation and, and equipment. And at the end of the day, you know, the art form has to kind of catch up to all the innovation and technology. Yeah. It's like, what can we do with this now? Right? Like, uh, you know, when you think about, you know, painters, in the Renaissance, when they finally decided that they would fan brushes and those kind of things, I'm not sure if that's what happened. But for instance, if that's the case, it's like, oh, when we have this new brush technology now. How do we use it? How how is it going to affect our artwork? And it's one of those things where, yeah, manufacturers just throw out, you know, tools and and, and innovations, and we have to sort of catch up with it and find ways to use it. And how much does that affect people's uh, production of actual work and art? If yeah. You know, I find, and I've, you know, like I say, I've been around a minute and it, there's been so much change in my career, which is about 40 years now. So, you know, you kind of go from back in the day, I had an FE, a Nikon FE, which was a film camera to where we are now with these. And I, I find myself that it's, I'm, I'm not overwhelmed because I love technology, but it is overwhelming to go, oh, I have to relearn this whole thing. And now how do I make these images that I want to make? What, you know, 
anyway, I find personally, which is another reason I'm kind of sticking with my semi-analog, you know, DSLRs, I want to be able to focus on my work and, you know, do cool stuff and, mm -hmm. you know, not have to relearn a whole camera then, you know, again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, very much agreed. I, I, some of the, some of the innovations, I just think it's ahead of us and it's, you know, we don't really need that. And, and that may be true for most of us, but there are examples like when they first started coming out with the uh, 30, 40, 50 megapixel cameras, most of us are like, there, there's no need for that. But you know what? I, in that particular case, I had a need because I did 360 stitch stuff so I could get more resolution with less shots. And there's a real, yeah. uh, uh, production need for that. It makes it mm -hmm. faster and easier and everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's just one tiny, tiny example, but most people don't need that camera. Most people don't need 120 frames a second shooting, but certain situations that could, that could benefit. And in the long run, it's the long run. So if you, you know, think back my first digital camera, I got from the lost and found at a restaurant where I worked and it was pretty huge. <laughs> and it was, so it's been like 19, uh, 99. 98, something oh. like that. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds right. And, um, it, the big printing on the front said megapixel as, as in, <laughs> as one. in one. As in yeah. one. <laughs> so, you know, all these innovations have, have come to where we are now. We have fantastic cameras. I always talk about that polycamery thing of, of you can go out to Costco and get a camera in a pinch and you can be, if you're a professional, you can probably do what you need to do. If you mm -hmm. something how you if your camera drowned or something and you need to re get a replacement because you didn't have a backup or whatever, but you can, you know, they're all so, they're all so amazing that I still applaud all of these advancements even if I don't have a need yet. But I do like this, for instance, the not be, not having to use high speed sync just makes things much simpler for for those situations. And I get what's the only downside to high speed sync? I guess it uses up the batteries on your, your strobes faster. I guess that's about it. Yeah. But anyway, that's, uh, that's a very interesting one. Oh, this is one. There's my husband. <laughs> but you made a really good point, Pepper, about, you know, getting a camera. I think one of the things, oh, there's my dog. Hey, dog. Uh, one of the things that I have a. Don't worry, it's an audio a, show. Nobody's it's audio. Good. I have a mentor uh, who I've never met. He lives in England. He lives in Blackpool. And I called him one time and said, you know, what do you think I was going to buy a camera? What do you think about cameras? And he said, you know, first of all, the best camera you can ever have is the one that's in your hand when you need it. But secondly, I think, you know, there is a lot of innovation out there and there's a lot of cool stuff and it's, it can be very attractive to think, well, I need the best thing or I need the newest thing. Whereas I feel really strongly for the work that I do, you know, the real estate side of things and the art side of things that I do, I need what I need to do that work. And mm -hmm. you're, you're exactly right. I think people have to sort of sit back for a second and think, well, what do I actually need? Like, do I need 50 megapixels for the work that I do? Or am I going to be spending, you know, $3,000 more than I need to spend to get, yeah. you know, be a, a gearhead, I suppose. And yeah, bragging rights and all, but are you going to be able to do, what do you need to do your work well? Right. Cause ultimately oh, it's the work, isn't it? Absolutely. It's like you're getting a, getting a G wagon for a farmer. All of a sudden it's like, yeah, you got a G wagon. Good yeah. job. But you yeah. know, yeah. can you put your, can you put your cow in it? No. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, 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 you know, I, I love gear. I mean, I, we have, you guys probably know in Calgary, we have this amazing store called the camera store and they, there are opportunities to just walk in there, rent a thing, rent whatever it is you need and try it out, which is what I've done particularly with the mirrorless stuff, which is why I'm kind of not there yet, but to, to go and purchase that thing and put that, make that output before I know that that's going to work for my practice and the things that I want to make. I don't know. I just kind of, I'm yeah. cheap too. You know, like I, a new camera to me is like somebody's advertising a, whatever it is online and it's been, it has a thousand actuations on it. Good. I'll have that. <laughs> a thousand sounds mm -hmm. great. Yeah. Hey, Hey, side tangent, who has a brick and mortar camera store in their town? Do you, is there anything by you, Rob, up there in Vancouver Island? Oh God, no, I got a London drugs and that's about it. Yeah. Wow. I mean, we're I mean, so lucky. Hey, Jeff. Yeah, yeah, we got uh, Vistech and Cam Store, the two main ones. Yeah, no, Cal Calgary's good for that. the The camera store, we just, I just did a, I just did a webinar there and uh, talking about real estate photography, and then, but their 
amazing. The people, the staff there are so friendly and knowledgeable. Yeah. Like if you go there and you say, hey, can I just try this? You can probably rent anything there and just check it out. They've got, um, yeah, they got a, pretty much the entire lineup of every camera uh, camera body that you want. So, um, yeah, it's it's a great place to go. I even got a chance to play with the uh, the new Fuji uh, uh, medium format one, which is, oh, yeah. yeah, they're a lot of fun. Huh. But Did you definitely, rent it? It's, it's nice to get a, no, I'm not, yeah, I can't afford anything anymore. <laughs> I'm, I've got three kids. <laughs> I, I have no money. <laughs> Yeah, it goes in it goes in cycles, doesn't it? For a while, the income's good, and you can update things, and then after a while, oh, I thought like the kids are c- cyclical. No, no, <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I mean the the business. Like I've just had these eras in my business where I, there was plenty of money coming in. I could update if I wanted yeah. to, no problem, mm-hmm. even if it was for fun. And then there's times and kind of now. I, me too, Rob. I'm in one of them now where I, I got to be careful about the budget. So luckily, I have what I need. So uh, you know, mm-hmm. like Julie, like there's no need for me to go out and get this, but when it comes time uh to update like if i you don't crash a camera but i I did crash my camera if you know what i mean the flying kind and uh so i updated (laughs) out of of necessity so i got some of the uh, all the new cool features of the drones because i had to i didn't need to i mean i only needed to because i crashed it so um yeah when you when you're thinking about your next camera this is these are the kinds of things that i would think about um, you mm-hmm. might be even future proofing yourself. So when you do invest yeah. in a new camera, <laughs> you don't want to be um, jealous of all the things that come out sh- shortly after, right? You want to mm-hmm. get ahead of that a little bit and maybe splurge a little in that case. But mm-hmm. And I guess the G.I. Joe takeaway from all this is if you have a brick and mortar t- camera shop in your area, please support them. Don't go through Amazon. Buy whatever you can local. Support your local businesses and they will support you. The world's falling apart. San Francisco. San Francisco. One of the, you know, main cities in the world <laughs> for mm-hmm. a lot of things. Not as far as the old shop um, that used to sell junk. Unless I'm wrong, unless there's something I don't know about, the last real kind of the big camera stores left. The Sammy's that was in there. We used to have a handful in the area. There are still some smaller ones, which are actually quite nice in some of the neighboring towns. But... <sighs> falling apart so mm. I, I don't i think rentals in this area are all going to be online now i, I think i don't know yeah. of any place that rents oh, go i was just going to say speaking of camera stores has anyone been to bnh like the mecca of camera stores oh, yeah. i have yeah. literally been in there it is the coolest okay. place oh it's ever. Am- it's amazing yeah it's okay. the whole train track thing that they have in there have you been there jeff <laughs> no i actually i had a chance to go but i, I, I missed it Oh. Uh, earlier this year, I was in New York, but uh, I think now you have to go back just to go to B and H. It's so it's <laughs> so extraordinary. It's such a it's 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 quite a big store in terms of footprint, footprint, and it's a two or three floors, I think. And they have wherever you buy something on it is more than that, actually, isn't it, uh, Pepper? It's four four floors, I think. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure I can think of three. Yeah. Uh, so it's been a few years now, of course. Whenever you buy something, so if you're on the third floor, or whatever you buy something, you don't carry that downstairs. They right. put it in this, you know apparatus and send it down on all these train tracks so when you're downstairs at the cash registers it's the coolest thing it's like willy wonka for camera nerds <laughs> they're they're in, intensely go. efficient so sammy's and bnh okay well sammy's i think i don't know if there are any sammy's left that's the, the san francisco one left and some other ones i know have gone away but maybe there's still some left somewhere to look yeah. it was a good place when it when i used to go there I used to go buy stuff locally for that purpose. I would purposely go there instead of updating my stuff. And I, my amount of sales was not enough to help. <laughs> but that, again, that's another really good point. Like after this, what I call the upside down, I think one of the first places I went back to was the camera store for many reasons. But one, you know, when you need to connect with your folks and yeah. it, Everybody, I mean, people do shop at Viztech here in town, but the camera store, for whatever reason, it seems to be the mecca of those of us who are kind of either mostly working or fully working as photographers. And we, you know, we just kind of go down and they have a little book section there and you can, and there's always donuts. I don't know what it is with those guys, but there's always donuts <laughs> anyway, but it's nice. You know, you Gotta can go in there in. and they know who you are and they say hello. And they're very, very supportive of the community here. And I, like you were saying, Rob, they, they will actively seek out people who are, you know, working and doing cool stuff. And you know, Jeff, they, mm-hmm. 
they connect with us as photographers and bring us on board to do things or cover us or they write articles about us. I mean, they've, Jason and I, my husband and I have, you know, have some stuff that we've been doing over the last few years. And the camera store, I am not a person necessarily to be self-promoting. They'll reach out to us and they, you know, say, oh, we heard you're doing such and such. And they're, they're very great. I would be so sad. They, and they struggled too through the pandemic for sure. They sure, okay. had a tough time like everybody did. So yes, you're right. I think Rob, you made a really good point, you know, support local because then you're not Pepper who doesn't have a camera store in his city. Yeah. After exactly. the move to online sales and then, mm. and then COVID hits and it just was Madness. just a, I mean, the last straw was a big old straw, right? The last straw was a, was a log and it just made some of these go away and it's just, they're already struggling. So I just, yeah, I missed that. And actually, you know what? That's a good segue. Like let's get to our, uh, uh, next topic about finding inspiration. I think this is good because the cameras, uh, your local camera stores, when they do have events and stuff like that, it's a great way to get inspiration and get a little bit more knowledge and to learn something new and to get free donuts. <laughs> We're going to miss the chance to meet new people and get fatter. Yeah, is it exactly. sad that photographers think about photography and food all the time? Right. <laughs> oh, it's not just me? <laughs> no. Oh. No. I mean, or add, You can add one or two subjects, and that's that 95% of my thought process. <laughs> I think most you know, of the like, get-togethers I, are like food-related or drink-related. It's like beer and coffee or donuts and coffee. For reals. Like when I book an event, my first question is, is there food and will you feed me? And then I might ask them about their budget. Exactly. So Jeff, yeah. you do a lot of interesting photography there. So where do you look for uh, inspiration? Yeah, uh, you know, early on in my photography career, I, I was kind of thinking, okay, well, I'll look at other photographers, you know, that's, that's who I'll look up to, that's who I'll idolize, who I'll, you know, get inspired by. But it's a slippery slope, because, you know, you, you want to be at that level, you know, you want to be able to command like in a certain rate you want to be able to command being able to control um all the aspects of your of your scene and shot and and especially with social media these days everything's curated so they only want you to see things that are you know that uh, show you know them in good light so it, it is a slippery slope because then you kind of get depressed uh i i'll admit i you know following other photographers you know who are more established than myself and you know, big famous photographers who have, you know, lots of followers on social media, I, I sort of was like, oh, I want to be them. I want to emulate them. I, you know, it was a slippery slope because then, you know, it's impossible to be the another person. Uh, then, uh, you know, something, something changed. I don't know exactly when in my career, but maybe it was more of when I started building more confidence in my work and saying, hey, you know, my work is actually is good. Um, I started looking at other things for inspiration, things that didn't allow me to compare my work with other other photographers. Um, things like, uh, you know, paintings, you know, um, abstract art, uh, you know, from, you know, abstract specialist period. Um, things like, you know, mid-century modern furniture inspires me <laughs> for some reason. Wow. I don't know how, but maybe it's just the clean lines and the modern aesthetic and stuff like that. That sort of like inspires my work uh, to be really minimalistic and, and abstract in, in my in, in my composition uh, movies, you know, uh, although those are, you know, basically just moving pictures um, there, you know, there's there's sound, there's, you know, there's editing involved in, in it. There's there's so many different aspects of movies that help inspire me to, um, you know, the list goes on. And the main takeaway, I think, is looking elsewhere other than photography. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you learn your craft, you know, your limits, you know, how to expose properly, you know, how to light properly, you know, you know how to use your equipment properly. But then after that, you know, you have to go, you know, somewhere else to get inspiration. Yeah. I, I like that. I like that a lot. Thinking yeah. in gen general terms of art and feeling and what, hey, do you, because I looked at your, um, some of your, I guess you were both using the, uh, link tree <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Jeff, maybe it's and i looked really quickly at some things and uh so it's an audio show so people listening might not know yet that jeff has a lot of um uh say i call it abstract 
artwork. Yeah. And maybe you find some different terms and you can tell us about that. But sure. um, it's important to know that um, what Jeff's talking about is, um, is it's, it's artwork. It's not um, uh, taking portraits or real estate or weddings. This is artwork. So um, do you, along that line, I was wondering is, do you go into that abstract? Uh, like when, when you see something you've created, did you go into that with a deliberate idea of what you were creating or does it more like happen through a process? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a good question. Um, a, a lot of it is through, uh, just the feeling, uh, like the feeling like it needs something more or something less. Hmm. Um, like when I, when I expose for a photo, like, uh, for instance, I, I do a lot of like, you know, just street photography, really vernacular photography. That's just like, okay, well, you took a picture of a sidewalk, who cares? <laughs> right. But at the end of the day, I, I end up using that as a background to kind of, um, you know, when I layer on uh, different uh, color tones and color chips that I shoot in the studio. So, you know, part of the, the NFT project that I was starting to work on was shooting landscapes uh, or cityscapes around Calgary, around town. Um, and very, you know, very, uh, you know, um, uh, I, I would say just simple, clean lines. But then I, I add a layer of like, you know, uh, abstraction to it. So that, that's sometimes it just happens. Um, and I really didn't think about it as I was taking the photo. Um, it just happens afterwards. I'm like, hey, you know, I think this needs something else. And it's not finished yet. It's like that feeling like, okay, well, I think there's something else I need to do to it. Yeah, nice. Yeah. What about, what about you, Julie? Are you... Uh... Are you like me that gets my gets my inspiration of uh, I got a job to do I need to go do it or do you uh, <laughs> find it? You know, way? yeah. I mean, part of my work, like you know, Rob, you know, part of it is real estate. I think if a person approaches it from the, the point of view of, I'm just going to shoot a house and I need to make money and I'm going to give these to my realtors. There's 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 that level of photography. I have a different approach to even real estate where I really, really desire for my client, which is the realtor or who is the realtor rather, and the their client to see that house, how they see it in their head. Uh, you all know that, you know, the way you see your home is very emotional and very personal yeah. and somebody who's coming in the door is not going to see it like that. So my goal with real estate is to create the, the dreamscape that I think these homeowners might have in their heads and that seems to work you know i'm careful about angles and shooting it so that people under people who are viewing that home for the first time will see how does it flow and which room is connected to whatever all but in terms of inspiration that's a really jeff i wanted to say jeff and i've known each other for what 15 or so years maybe yeah, uh, probably more a bit longer yeah and i i you know your work is so extraordinary and it's I can't do that kind of work. I don't even understand how you put it together, but it really inspires me to kind of step outside what is my comfort zone. And, you know, so my, I would say that my inspirations are somewhat prescribed in terms of, you know, Mary Ellen Mark. It was, I met her one time. It was a whole crazy thing that happened. But anyways, you know, somebody like her who is or was, you know, not your classic beauty and not your classic speaker and all that kind of stuff but just did amazing work and i think and diane arbus also who was a misfit and i consider myself very much a misfit in my work and my life so i find that really insp inspiring to see work by people like you jeff who doesn't i i'm so amazed to hear you don't think that you're what i think you are which is, I think you're so amazing. Like I have a little bit of starstruckness, you. you know, related to your work because it's oh, so thank you. You're you're amazing. I think we worked together at Globe Fest or something, didn't we? Is that how we met? I don't even yes. know. Yes, I think yeah. that's that's how. Yeah, yeah. We worked you know, and even stuff like that. Yeah, and so along comes Jeff Cruz, who I knew of to work on this festival that my husband and I have been shooting for 15 years. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm totally starstruck that this guy is turning up to shoot this festival with us. Um, so, you know, I find all that really inspiring and I kind of like working around and with, uh, sorry, I mean this in a most loving way, but kind of weirdos. So 
there's a one of my colleagues, Chris Tate, who I did this six year show with. Chris is just like off the walls. He's absolutely off the walls. And he he's way younger than me. I knew him when he was a 15 year old football player. And he called me up one night and he says, come downtown. We're going to shoot this party in a back alley. And I'm like, Chris, it's like almost 11 o'clock at night. I'm going to bed. He goes, no, no, come downtown. You got to come downtown. And, and I went. And because I did that, I you know, I was really inspired by this kid who was just that you know, willing to go in the back alley somewhere and shoot a party. Mm-hmm. He, he's why we ended up in England and doing this show that we did anyway. So I take my inspiration from all sorts. And it, I don't know, sometimes I'm really shocked by where it comes from because it's super unexpected a lot of times. Well, you, you just gave a good example of the advice I want to give is just putting yourself in those new situations and mm-hmm. going out there with the, the main tool that you know is your camera and maybe some related gear, depending on who you are, and mm-hmm. and go out and do something new. My, you know, I've, my, uh, I brought up the example quite a bit of I've been shooting a lot of high school sports just because mm-hmm. my kid and I learned a ton that I didn't know I didn't know. And I got to know things about my camera that I didn't know existed and was an issue and I, all kinds of things. So that's your example of just saying yes to going, mm-hmm. I mean, really to a dark alley at night. Okay. But, you know, if you put yourself in those new situations and you're going to develop your own new style and you're going to yeah. find your people might look at it and know that it's your style, or at least you will and people, you know, so. Just um, definitely because of that experience. Chris was already a street photographer, you know, by the time we sort of um, connected that night. But had it not been for me saying, oh, yeah, whatever, I'll go downtown. I we I would have never embarked on street photography because street photography and a lot of people will say this. It's terrifying. You're out in mm-hmm. public. You're pointing a camera at strangers. And just as a sideline, a lot of people don't understand what the laws are in developed countries. And so they don't do it mm-hmm. or they don't like you know, photographing things that are controversial or scary or disturbing and all that kind of stuff. Right. And I, I'm so glad that I took Chris up on that opportunity to do that because it just street photography is for me. I love it now. I really love it because it's such an interesting form, but I also will say that it also, it informs the work that I do in people's homes and at events because I'm, I think as a result of that, I'm looking for a really different, um, aspect of what's going on at an event or even at a home. And and I'm kind of a chatty person anyways, but I think street photography kind of pulls away your fear of certain things. And I now I'm able to connect really quickly with homeowners, which I think is important because I am in their space, moving their stuff. Mm-hmm. Right. So I need to really quickly create a rapport with them so that when I go in their bathroom and I pull all their stuff out of their closet... <laughs> I don't pull it out of the closets, but, you know, clean off their countertops. And they they now kind of have a connection with me enough that I can mess with their personal stuff. Well, it's oh, a yeah. really important skill that, hey, a lot of photographers don't have is to being able mm-hmm. to really interact correct, really well with people. Because mm-hmm. to me, it might be I need to I need to get them to do that clean out before I even get there, for instance, or, or mm-hmm. to f- help fix something and to do that in a tactful way that's that still will work with someone who's we're going to get maybe too deep into real estate photography for this show it's a very general show usually but mm. but like a, um you know there's a some i think you mentioned earlier there's this emotional attachment that mm-hmm. people are leaving this thing a lot of times and they they really think that an object really belongs there and the rest of us are like oh it's got to go so you know you got to be have all these kind of tactful ways and practicing on the on the street photography not yeah. only does it help with that but it also i've had comments from real estate clients that like what i do in the area surrounding like i'll get some lifestyle stuff of mm-hmm. the say the golf course or whatever and they that's the that's what's different because a lot of that product is i'm kind of getting to, i'm had to get comfortable with the fact that it's kind of a commodity we're all kind of doing the same thing on the interiors or whatever um hopefully hopefully good um so that's the other things that make the difference and that can mm-hmm. be translated into any kind of photography right if you're doing events yeah. um, what do you do differently than every yeah. other event photographer yeah. but all of this goes the same with um you know any type of photography like if you're like when you're posing people for portraits weddings mm-hmm. What's right different? like going up to uh, a bride and saying hey so i'm gonna touch your hair because it's in your face here i'm gonna move it over to here and i'm gonna shift your body this way so you, you look yeah. a little bit thinner Right, like things like that, you are right in their personal space, yeah. moving them, some touching them. Right there. Yeah, and it's uh, 
and you need to get that comfort. And it's funny, we, I remember when I started with real estate photography, I wanted to do that because the nice thing with houses is that you don't have to tell a couch to smile. It doesn't care if you move its cushion. Um, and the mother of the couch will have nothing to tell you. Well, yeah, the, the mother of the couch will say that is the most beautiful couch ever because that's my couch. <laughs> Right. It came from my, my couch loins. Uh, but just like Julia was saying, you are in a, somebody's it personal on, space. Does it happen on the couch? That's a little bit meta. Mm. Mm. <laughs> we don't but, go there. Okay. Yeah. This is a clean rated show. <laughs> but yeah, so it's it's neat. I, I like the street photography one too because I, I remember I was doing that once and I just took a, a random shot of a person and I thought, oh my gosh, this captured this so perfectly. Mm. And I went up to the person and said, "Hey, look, I'm a I'm a commercial photographer. I do street photography for uh, for fun. I got this photo for uh, of you." And I said, "Wow, that's great. Delete it." <laughs> but, well, okay, sure. Never ask. Never ask. No, and yeah. never gloat. Never no. share. No. Yeah. no. Well, if you want Just... to become more self confident in a lot of ways, do that because. Yeah. You'll quickly learn what do you have to do legally, what do you need to do to be a good person, and all those levels, and how it's great interacting with people. Uh, we told the story on the show when we had Dave Wilson on where mm. some idiot in downtown San Francisco said, he came out of this building, and he says, you can't take photos of the building. And this is America, you know. <laughs> and and, and uh, Dave, bless him, is uh, he's lived here forever, but he's Scottish, if I remember right. Boy, did he educate this guy. <laughs> You're like, you can't just go around telling people what they can't do. And the guy, he couldn't, he couldn't hardly take it. He had all these other excuses and stuff. And it's really, I, I was very, I very much, I'm very much the same mindset that Dave has. It's nice to learn that about Dave. And when you're out talking to people, sure, I'll delete things usually, frankly, because they're probably not that good. If, if, it's, if it's some spectacular thing, I do have the option of saying, no, I'm not going to do that. Because you just have to know what you must do and what you should do. Yeah. Like, I can't use that. I can't go make money off a photo of somebody. That's out unless they're paid for it. And I don't know how it is in Canada, but um, if somebody's holding up a camera, you can't just say, put your camera down. I don't, I don't agree. That's, that's just not a thing here. <laughs> but it's, it's uh, again, be, Canada, but be nice. The, but, yeah. Okay. The, in Canada and U.S. and Europe, and I had to learn this when we were traveling so much. Europe's and, weird. Japan, yeah, but they, they have very similar laws to us here. There's no expectation of privacy in public regardless, and that includes kids. So, you know, when you're you're talking about, you know, being a nice person, I I am never visible to whoever I'm shooting. They don't know I'm uh -huh. there. And I think for me anyway, for my street photography practice, I don't want them to know I'm there. I don't want them to be aware of me. I don't want to disturb that scene in any way. Uh, and so, right. you know, in however many years I've been doing this, uh, twice I've had somebody approach me. Once was at the Calgary Stampede, and he's like, oh, you can't take pictures of me here. And I am like, I'm quite fortunate to have a second language that I speak fluently, and I just immediately flip into second language. I don't know nice. what you're saying. I'm sorry, I don't speak English. And the other one was in <laughs> New York, and a guy, a fella, It must not be French. It must not yeah, be French. French. Oh, yeah, I'm definitely French. If you're, if you're in Canada, then don't... Some of the people understand you. Hey, listen, by the way, because sidebar, <laughs> sidebar, Alberta just became a, an officially bilingual province, first of all, and French speaking people and French Canadians like me are about 325,000 people in this province. We're, we make up 10% oh. of the population here. And that's I, across the board in Canada. There's French populations in every province. So, sorry, that's sideline. You, when I was a kid, I'd go buy a toy and it had to be half French and half English on the yeah. label. I mean, that's yeah. nothing new. Because the country is officially bilingual. So, yeah, you'll yeah. see that. Yeah. But, um, Jeff, you, you said something before, and I wanted to say, you know, because you're not usually an event photographer and all that kind of stuff, but I do remember when whenever you came out to Goldfest, the stuff that you do, you're, you know, you're very abstract, but be, as, by virtue of what you do, the way you perceive events and people and stuff going on is really different. And I do remember your photos had this quality that, you know, it's not just Joe Buddy who shoots events all the time. It's this other fella who does, mm. is, a, is an artist actually. And that really translated into your work. I thought it was so cool. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah. I, you know, I, I try to add my element of, you know, artistic aesthetic into 
Mm. Uh, like even like uh, portrait photography, event photography that I like to do uh, for fun. Um, you know, I shoot music festivals. Uh, I've been shooting, uh, well, back then when they used to be called raves uh, yeah. in the uh, mid to late 90s. Uh, yeah, so I've been shooting those, uh, you know, raves, and now they've, you know, evolved into large-scale music festivals in, in in the forest and those kind of things. So I've been shooting those kind of events for a while, and I've always wanted to kind of, um, you know, keep the artistic uh, aesthetic into even even uh, you know event photography, um, and, and and sort of that's probably why I, I you know I say lens-based artist because, um, you know. I, I try not to put myself into a niche of like, okay, I do landscapes or I do portraits. I, I do, um, you know, uh, anything that really interests me. And early on in my career, I was like, I need to kind of tell people what I shoot. And I just got so fed up of trying to figure out what I do because then I'm like, well, you know, tomorrow I'm a landscape photographer. The next day I'm a, you know, portrait photographer. Like, and then I started pulling my hair out. <laughs> and so I was just like, well, now you know what i don't care anymore i'm just gonna blanket statement say lens-based artist um also too i do a lot of um you know post-production uh on, on my on my work sometimes i you know I, I add two photographs together i like conceptualize things stitch things so you know at the end of the day i you know i want to be kind of truthful to it and just say i, I initially it comes through a lens that's mm -hmm. that's the point that's starting um, point of my work. Jeff, I'm going looking through some of your stuff right now and um, some of the night shots at some of the festivals. And uh, I have a photographer question is, uh, do you go around with, you got a lot of night things with uh, the subjects are really evenly lit. And I'm wondering, it can't be just a hot shoe strobe or something you're using there. Do you have something more elaborate that you go there with? Uh, yeah, I usually shoot. Um, I, I was at this um, uh party once and I saw this photographer he was the event photographer and he was shooting with his flash off camera with a wire attached to it and I was like I didn't know you could do this <laughs> it was like a, a hot shoe I think that, that's what it's called a hot shoe flash extension yeah, cord. yeah you can just wire it yeah yeah it's all kind yeah, of kind of old like, school now with all the battery operated stuff but yeah yeah and and so I got myself one um at, at B, you know ordered through BH of all places we were talking about that earlier and I still have it. And that's kind of what I use to shoot um, like uh, music festivals at night uh, to kind of get what I want. And, you know, sometimes like I see a scene and I'm like, oh, it's not lit properly. And then I'll have to have like fill flash or something like that. But rather than making it flat, I kind of shoot it at an angle, to add depth to it and stuff. Nice. So. It looks really even. So it looks like you're getting a lot out of that. So it's, mm -hmm. it's one of those struggles that I maybe me or a lot of people have, but that looks looks great. Thanks, I, I saw some guy at a at a festival where it was funny. He looked like he looked like a wizard. He looked like Gandalf, and essentially what he had was he had a uh, a speed light on a monopod with, but on the on the top of the speed light, it had one of those ball attachments. So it was just a big round ball and he'd be there one hand. He's got his camera with the trigger on it. And then on the other hand, he has this staff with the, with a flash on it. And so he just lifts it into the air over his subject goes click and he yeah. lights it. And I thought this is brilliant. Like I would, I would totally do that. I would get like the whole Gandalf outfit and do that. <laughs> but I thought about so when, when I got a bunch of that Godox stuff, a few, I got all the Godox stuff. I ordered a big package uh, right before COVID hit. And I was uh, going into well, getting ready for um, expanding a bit with portraits and stuff. Obviously, they took a back seat, but I was like, with all of this really small battery operated gear, I was like, we could rig up some kind of a like a vest with protruding poles <laughs> and have have a small, small either hot box or just diffuser diffused things but they'd be off camera and you could just walk around a festival and have super well lit stuff. And then I, I kind of kind of like i said put it all to, in a back seat and i but i have seen some people do it somebody mm -hmm. showed up uh i don't do this but so i saw photos of the guy taking photos at um the burning man and he had this very elaborate setup have you guys ever tried anything like that like i love the gandalf idea fact, i can I see jeff's face it. here and he's like hmm hmm 
That's what, I mean, you could idea. really MacGyver yeah. something together for that. Right? Or you could be Leah Hennel and she just brings her son, Hunter, and he's yeah. like off. Or that's I'll how I met Leah, stuff. actually. <laughs> she just like walked up to me and said, can you hold my flash? Yeah. And I'm like, sure. Yeah. Nice. But yeah, your face, yeah. Jeff. You're so yeah, funny. I've been to Burning Man a couple of times and, and it's one of those places where you want to bring all that stuff, but it's just going to get trashed. I mean, it's, it's okay if, if, yeah. if you've got, yeah, if you, if all the, all the dust from the, uh, the playa there, um, yeah. it's just made, the finest powder, you know, you could ever I made find. the mistake of, uh, letting a friend take my car one time to Burning Man. Mm -hmm. It was never the same after oh, that. No, yeah. no. Or, or yeah. this year, you know, the whole dust is not, yet <laughs> yeah. makes great mud. Oh, mud. Yeah. Yeah. It was yeah, a little, bit, it, of a, it is little a, bit of a fire festival vibe that time. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I, I would Last definitely break. recommend Burning Man, though, uh, to any photographer or even anyone in general who's interested in it. Uh, I would say go to it. If I don't know if the three of you have ever been, but I think it would be great for inspiration. It, to me, it's sounding yeah. a little bit. It's now by now, it's become a bit cliche around yeah. with because people think you know it used to be a freedom kind of festival. Now it's kind of corporatized or whatever. But I think the photos can be amazing, especially if you come up with new ways of doing things there. But. What was, be, Jeff, what was the festival that you did for your show? You you had that exhibition in probably yeah. 2013 or something? Yeah, like I think it was 2014. Mm -hmm. It was called Festival Nation. Mm -hmm. And oh, so right, it was, yeah. yeah, it was just, uh, um, I think, 15 to 20 of uh, photos that I, I uh, curated with my own, like, uh, you know, music festival photography. Um, that's what I did. And and it's a lot, like I said, it's a long-term project. So I, you know, these transformative gatherings, like music festivals, raves, whatever you want to call it, are such an inspiration because people are there for a reason. People are there because they're in a transition in their life. So they're so open to new ideas, meeting people, discussions, and those kind of things, um, as opposed to, you know, our everyday lives that people call the default world. Uh, we're really guarded because we have to be. Um, to, in order to protect ourselves, in order to live our, the life and society that uh, path that they've created for us, so these transformer gatherings are such an inspiration, especially for photographers, because you, you can capture things that would you would never see <laughs> on the street, walking down in a, in a, in a major city or a normal city. Um, yeah, it's just it's just mind boggling how much you can see and, and interact with there. So, yeah, it's it's one of the things, like, I would say, you know, if you're interested, put it on your bucket list and, and try to make it happen because it is it is difficult to get there. Uh, it's very expensive because you have to prepare. You have to live in the desert basically for a week. So, yeah. uh, but it's worth it. There are uh, other you kind of what, smaller, smaller ones that aren't in the desert, too. So find something either near or something that interests you. Maybe there's a subject matter that's a get together. It doesn't have to be photography related, but take advantage so I was going to ask everyone to give a quick last inspirational thought before we move on to the next things. But I guess mine is find that event and just, it, it does, the event doesn't have to be about photography, but you make it a project of your own and say, I'm going to do something different. I'm going to do something I'm not comfortable with, something that I'm going to make mistakes with and learn from. And I, I think yeah. that I've, I've really loved it when I have had the chance to do that kind of thing. So yeah. who else has any parting, uh, inspiration or, or just advice just to kind of close this one out and we'll go to I'm, we'll I'm going to ride on what you just said I think that is so important um, we we can become very fixed in our niche whatever that is and that is a bit of a uh, creativity killer so yeah. doing something that's scary like going into a back alley with a kid who's like 20 years younger than you are <laughs> and shooting something at the midnight do, do that. I, I, I love a lot of people are, I'm, I'm never shooting street photography. It's too scary. I don't want to be whatever, whatever they don't want to be. Or I, I'm not a landscape photographer and that's a real challenge for me to go out there and find something to shoot. There's always something to shoot, but yeah, do what scares you. I know it's a bit of a, mm, you know, it's a bit of a cliche to say, do what scares you, but do something that scares you. It's really fun. A hey, festival look, look, would scare me. That would scare me. Before I forget, let me bounce something off of what you just said, <laughs> is reali realize and, and don't be uncomfortable with the fact that, uh, like, <clears throat> I feel like I should be good at things already, like landscapes. Yeah. Shouldn't we all be good at landscapes because we're all photographers? The answer is no. And be comfortable with that. Like, uh, yeah. like people are famous or really good at landscapes for reasons. They put the time in that, or whatever it is. But anyway, get comfortable with the fact that I, I used to I used to get down on myself with, oh, my gosh, I should have got better photos from that experience that we that, 
we're, that I did. But accomplished photographers will tell me, man, if they go shooting for the day, they'll be thrilled if they get one that they're happy to show. Mm -hmm. So keep that in mind too. Yeah. All right, let's go on. I've got a couple rapid fire things and then we'll wrap up because welcome. Uh, Jeff and Julie can also talk a lot just like Rob and myself. So <laughs> keep going. Uh, yes. Really, really quick. Uh, I wanted to bring up, we, we like to, we get a lot of uh, comments, questions like, Hey, do you guys shoot video? Like, or at least I do when we've gotten them over the time. So I like to throw in uh, when we talk about uh, we're photographers, something about video moving into that range uh, without getting into the heavy video cameras and the reds and stuff. Uh, I've been doing a lot of video thanks to Rob's recommendations, just using my iPhone. And, uh, there's a new black magic iPhone app that I tried out. It's free and it's fantastic so far, uh, because I was using, um, uh, Rob, what's the name of the, the other one? Um, yeah. Cause we were, what, what's the other app uh, we were Filmic using? Pro. Filmic Pro. Yeah. Which Filmic Pro yeah. is real powerful, but it's also the UI is kind of confusing. And uh, to me, it's just a bit much. And I really like the black magic app. So I just want to encourage everyone to try it out. Um, if you're expanding into video uh, just for fun or for, um, you know, we're using it iPhone video for real estate and stuff now. So, uh, try those out, try it out. Uh, you might really like that. Uh, does anybody have any kind of rapid fire things you wanted to bring up that before we, um, let people go, I have one more if nobody else. No, <laughs> I'm going to make your, all, well, all, all your eyebrows go up in your, in your heads. Now I'm okay. probably the only Samsung user in this group. We need, we always need one because Thanks. there's not, Thanks. A, there's not enough. <laughs> <laughs> so you were talking about video and I've been using, I have a Samsung uh, 22 plus, I guess it is. And the video on there is so amazing. I, like it was mm -hmm. really quite a bit of a change from my 20 that I had, but uh, yeah, I think we, when we're talking about, you know, complex gear and all that kind of stuff, sometimes simple and easy to carry is mm -hmm. the best thing because I can make perfectly fine 30. I'm not a videographer, but I can make perfectly fine 30, 40 minute long videos using my Samsung. Yeah. Good light, good color. Absolutely. The yeah, same thing. I'm, I'm sure that like, just like cameras, I'm not sitting here saying like one is so much better than the other. They're all at this point do so much. So it's good to know that we have Samsung user. I, I didn't, I didn't see if black magic makes an, uh, uh, app for it or not yet, but again, just yeah. recommending that people try it out because our audience is usually, um, uh, people that there's a lot of our audience is kind of fi trying to figure out the video scene and, mm. and I'm, you know, I'm still one of them, really. I'm trying to do best I can with video. Mm -hmm. Um, I just have one more thing I want to, cause I have a small platform here middle sized platform. I want to make a gripe because we talk about Adobe too much on all the great things they do, but I have a gripe <laughs> yeah. because we do, we all use it. And I'm a big, I, I like, I, I'm very happy with it, but I was paying for Adobe stock for a few years, 30 bucks a month. And I didn't use it enough. And finally, every time I would cancel it, they would say, well, you're going to lose the, the number of credits you got each month. You get X number of credits and they all yeah. add up. But if you cancel it, stop paying 30 bucks a month, they're gone. And I have a problem with that. So I finally canceled it. And I said, um, do, and I was talking to one, somebody there and I, and I said, do what's right and leave me a bunch of credits. That's the right thing to do. And they didn't, he didn't really say he would, <laughs> but I, I, um, I think there's, I have some credits for like generative credits. They have something for their AI that they give everybody credits. I think I noticed that number and I felt, I thought they'd left me credits. Anyway, Adobe, to quote another show, Adobe, do better. All right. Not very many people are going to get that <laughs> joke. Um, but you know who's going to get that joke is this guy. Ron Pepper is a thief. That guy. <laughs> it's an inside what? joke. Might not, might not even make the show because I said, I, I, yeah, I stole their material one other time, but it's a, the Seahawkers podcast. If you're into any kind of sports, mm -hmm. it's good, even if you're not a Seahawks fan. All right. Mm. So um, anybody else want to throw anything out? Otherwise, we will uh, cue the music. Sure. You know what? I'm going to just throw one last thing out there in terms of the inspiration. This is something that I've been doing with a lot of my art photography, my street photography, is instead of looking at what a object is to shoot, 
it like going back to my days as doing sales, it was always like, oh no, don't tell them about what the the features are of the thing. Tell them about the benefits of it, right? Mm -hmm. Same kind of thing. Don't sh don't try and tell. Hey, look, this is a picture of a person. No, tell the story. Tell the emotion. Grab that and try and focus mm -hmm. on the feeling that you're trying to get. Like I've got one shot that um, I've sold. Um, and it's of a it's a picture uh, uh, in Japan of the owner of a ramen shop looking at his guests eating his ramen, and he's there, he's proud, and he's happy that all the people are eating his ramen. It is the it's that perfect moment when you see this guy that's really proud of his accomplishments and is satisfied at every at uh, how his guests are mm -hmm. eating. And it's just that it it epitomizes like that whole food culture in Japan. And it's just that perfect uh, image for telling that story and getting that feeling. And so I always say, go out, find a feeling. If, it, if you feel something when you see it, try and capture that with your lens. That's a good one. I yeah, love it. Advice. So much easier said than done, but that is what we're all looking for, right? Tell mm -hmm. a story. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, thanks. And the um, last part of all of this, um, you know, we used to say, if you want to learn something, Google it. Well, that's kind of changed these days because we don't actually have the, the attention span to actually read an article on anything anymore. So what do we say now? We say, YouTube, hey, you, you want to learn something? YouTube it. So we're going to ask our guests, what are your uh, YouTube picks? Where do you go for your when you need to YouTube something? What is your favorite YouTube channel? And let's start off with Jeff this time. <laughs> well, these days, uh, you know, I, I would say old reruns of this old house. <laughs> I know I didn't <laughs> put in show notes, but, uh, you know, we bought a 1971 bungalow a couple of years ago uh, in Canyon Meadows. And, and uh, you know, it needs a lot of fixing. Uh, good house, but needs a lot of fixing. And this old house is such a good resource because that thing never is outdated. It's, you know, the house uh, fixing up. DIY stuff will, will, you know, always be there and needed. Um, you know, another thing. What year um, is that from? Uh, I think the eighties, maybe early nineties. Oh, okay. Um, they still have new episodes, uh, but the oh. old ones are good, um, too. Um, you know, another thing I would say is, uh, um, for inspiration, boiler room is a good, uh, background music, YouTube channel that I listen to when I'm editing photos. Uh, I'm sure it's inspired some of my editing styles <laughs> in the past. So, yes. All right. Yeah, good. Nice. Thanks. What about you, Julie? Well, my first one comes with a warning. So just so you know, I'm a bit of a um, politics geek. Uh, one of the web, one of the YouTubes I really shouldn't listen to but love to is Midas Touch Network. It's M-E-I-D-A-S, by the way. Uh, if If you're into what's going on in the States, it's quite a interesting overview of you know things and i'm i am a person who reads articles and in particular i really love reading affidavits they're pretty fun I, I know it's so <laughs> weird but i love reading affidavits they're fun um the other one i have is a canadian photographer called uh, simon d'entremont in, in english it's simon uh i don't even know how to say that in english yeah i've never said it out loud i like his channel too i've never said it's it out he, loud he's he's so brilliant and he Damn he's such so a much. great photographer and he's a lovely man and his mm -hmm. training he he does you know sort of 10 minute long training videos so he's a nature photographer and he's really exceptional he's from um new brunswick i think because he's a bilingual guy uh but if somebody's looking for training not necessarily related to you know birds and outdoors and things like that he's an exceptionally good trainer he's such a he has an excellent easy compassionate delivery for his training videos i i don't know how you would say that in english anyway simon d'entremont is how we say it d'entremont d'entremont I don't well, know. <laughs> you know, it's like it's d'entremont. We anyway. Is entremont as in as in like uh, uh, I, I know the word. Um, d'entremont means between mountains. Oh, okay. It's not what I'm thinking of then. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> of the um, of the entre mont, mont is between mountains. Essentially, it's yeah. probably a really old name. But anyway, what do they what do they say? Like a kind of a welcoming, uh, like a welcome term, like a 
I can't, I'm trying to th- from restaurant days. I can't remember. Anyway, uh, Rob, <laughs> do you have a pick? <laughs> you know what? Because we, we're going we're going long here. So. Yeah, no, of course. We, we touched on it a bit before uh, the camera store. The Camera Store in Calgary actually has their own YouTube channel called The Camera Store TV. Oh, nice. Check it out because that's where uh, some stars like uh, Chris Nichols and Jordan... Oh, my God. I can't believe I forgot his name. Uh, Jordan Drake, uh, who were part of uh, DP Review, uh, first got their show going and they built up, you know... Uh, a show with millions of views, uh, hundreds, th- hundreds of thousands of uh, followers. They reviewed cameras. They talked about technique, and they also have guests like myself and Jeff. I believe you're on there as well, and Julie. I'm sure you're. Yeah, you're on we there. are. Yeah, we did yeah. a uh, fireworks seminar. Right, and so they've got a lot of content to learn how to do new things, but as well, they talk about gear. They actually probably do a better job of covering photography stuff than than you and I do, Ron. Uh-huh. So check them out. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> we, then, we go, we go yeah. our own ways, don't we, Rob? At the end and, of the night, yes, we do go part ways. And, <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, look in the old shows for Rob's um, pseudo dates with other photographers on um, instead of his wife. <laughs> that keeps happening. <laughs> so uh, mine is... Uh, going along the line of uh, pointing out shifting to video for photographers in an easy way. I've only watched a couple of his videos, but Colin Michael, and I I found him because he was talking about CapCut, which is a really great, simple app that takes all the mystery away from using high end video apps for those of us that are doing simple things and don't need all that. So I, uh, I liked his videos on CapCut. So I'll leave it at that. Uh, All these links are in the show notes. And uh, really quickly, because I said I would bring up something about the eclipse every the eclipse every time, but we're kind of skipping forward for time. Uh, look in the show notes. I put a link in there that's not even really photography specific. It's just about the eclipse and how to prepare for it. And I thought I read it, and I thought it was a good review, just to stop and think about the non photographer related issues, like don't look at the thing. <laughs> and uh, what, how, where to get the, in fact, the link is from a company that wants to sell you the glasses. So it makes sense. But um, so get those. And another one is like, uh, I hadn't thought about the temperature drop that happens and just things like that, that are, I just found interesting. Wanted to share it. Uh, if anybody wants a quick read, we should have said before, send us questions for the Q and a show questions at photofocus.com. You can also send any comments or suggestions for this show for topics or guests and any parting comments let's uh go the other way around uh jeff where what would you like to tell everyone as we're leaving where to find you where to find out more or anything else yeah usually i'm uh on the gram is that what people call it these days still <laughs> the young the young people the, yeah the youngsters uh you know i that's usually where i'm on uh, most of the time um, you know, I haven't really been using Facebook much, but uh, Instagram. Uh, you can find me on there as uh, J Cruz Photo, so J C R U Z F O T O, or Z, I guess is if you're down in the states. Um, yeah, uh, Instagram um, is, is my main point of contact. If, uh, All right, cool. Want to follow me, Julie? Where should people look for more about you? Yeah, they can get me also on Instagram at Julie Vincent Photography and also at Pro R E Photos Y Y C. I don't. Uh, I use my personal account a lot more often than I do the other one. And I also have another one that's called Mudchucker. Uh, Mudchucker Clayworks. You were just talking earlier about doing other things that sort of feature practice. I took up pottery so four, seven years ago, so it's very addictive. Nice. So make, I, sure, so make sure I have all those links and they'll be in the show notes. Yeah, they're in there. Nobody's going to remember link. all that stuff, right? Nope. <laughs> hey, Rob. Yeah, no, you can find me at Rob Moroto wherever you're, you're doom scrolling your socials. And of course, at robmoroto.com. And you can find my, my real estate photography course there if anyone is interested. And. Because it is uh, getting close to the commercial holidays, uh, I am putting out a Black Friday special. Just use the coupon code Black Friday, and you will get a discount off of my lifetime access course. Very nice, very nice. And as for me, I'm R Pepper on Instagram. Everywhere else, I'm just Ron Pepper, including .com. And uh, Bay Area photographer sent people my way. I always say I'm not promoting anything else. 
just here for the love of the podcasting genre. <laughs> just so, for poops and giggles. That's right. <laughs> so uh, send us questions, questions at photofocus.com. I want to repeat. And we will. He, you'll hear from us again in uh, two weeks for the Q&A show. So with that, get out, go shooting, and see you next time. Adios. Adios. Adios, amigo. Thanks, everyone. Ciao. C'est pas ce qu'on dit. Salut tout le monde. Bon après-midi. Passez une bonne journée.